All right, morning everyone. John Karish here with a long awaited video that I've promised folks I would do. Uh, cool and cold weather clothing for bike riding. Delvin Ishman's probably already done one of these, which I haven't watched yet, sorry Delvin. I'll go back and watch it after this one and we can compare again, that'll be fun. Uh, I'm not on our back deck at home. Uh, we have a, it's cooling off a little bit now in late October here, so probably do most of these in the sunroom from now on, which is kind of nice out here too. I like this. Uh, I should probably preface this video with saying that like all of this stuff, people are going to vary in their preferences and their temperature ranges. You know, you'll see, you see people who honestly, you see like teenage boys do this a lot where they'll, you know, wear shorts and tennis shoes and socks down to like 20 degrees and run around their kind. I probably did the same thing and don't remember it. And then you'll have, uh, you'll see people riding around on bikes with uh, full lobster mitts and, you know, full jacket when it hits below 60 degrees. So you probably already know where you land in that range. Uh, but I've been riding outside all winter long for probably 20 years now. And it's really about those cliche sayings that like, there's no bad weather, just bad clothing choices. And those, uh, for the most part, that is true. You, you, for two things are going on here, you sink enough money into all this stuff, you're kind of forced to ride to justify it in the winter. And also, if you do have better options than uh, your old cotton hoodie, you're gonna be a lot more comfortable when the temperatures dip outside. So what I'll do with this video is try to get through in kind of temperature ranges, starting from normal and getting down colder and colder, as opposed to like clothing groups, you know, let's we'll kind of hit everything as we go here. And I'll, I'll type all this out in, uh, text form below the video for descriptions also. But starting with just basic kit here, okay? You've got your, uh, you know, your normal jersey here, shift racing, Cahaba cycles, what's up? Also, bib shorts, pretty common. Still got an old school Beachy Coop kit here, still kicking. So, and I'm, I'm finding just those, you know, and normal cycling socks and shoes, helmet, either short or long finger gloves down to uh, probably, probably 60 degrees or so. Uh, that's on the road. Mountain bike, you can get away with a little bit less clothing as it gets colder because you're, uh, you're not moving as fast. The wind, the wind chill adds a major factor here. Anyone that's ever been out on a boat on the lake when it's cool, I'll tell you that. So start off with that down to 60, maybe for me, like 55 on a mountain bike. And after that point, I'm starting to think, okay, I'm going to be getting a little bit cool. Maybe what am I going to add next? So what I tend to do next would be like a thin uh, wool base layer up top. This one's from a uh, defeat and it's just a thin short sleeve, pretty tight fitting wool base layer, uh, you know, shorts on and then this on and then bib straps over the base layer. Uh, you can do it other ways. I think that's the best way though. So add, add a thin wool base layer. I've also got, Gore makes this one, which is just kind of interesting. Uh, it's got like a mesh back to it. It's super thin on the back side. You can almost see my hand through it. Then on the front, you've got this material that's like a, it's on a, it's like a wind block material just on the front of it. So this thing's awesome. The, the bad thing with this one is if it does heat up on a ride and gets above 60, you're gonna be miserable. And then you're stuck with this base layer trying to figure out what to do with it. So also consider temperature ranges as you go. Is it gonna drop to 40 from 50 or is it gonna warm up? All that influences it. So just two cool products. This one though, the thin wool short sleeve, my absolute favorite. Uh, these are awesome. So that and also a good vest also is key here. Uh, this one is a, a twin six vest. It's got a mesh back and three like nice pockets back there. Zipper front with a wind block material. Uh, packs up fairly small. You can stuff it in a jersey pocket or this is a backcountry research uh, Super 8 strap. Goes on like your top tube or seat post or something. You can strap some extra clothing to it. That's also nice in cooler weather to have some storage options. What are you gonna do with all this stuff once you start shedding it and you don't have a support car? Okay, uh, so the vest is good. And really, I mentioned the base layer first. I'll, a lot of times though, I'll just put the jersey and bibs on and put a vest on and roll. Uh, and 
you know, as it starts creeping down, you know, maybe say like, get if it's getting down into like, I know it's gonna be in the 50s riding, I'm definitely adding uh, some knee warmers, okay? Uh, these would, you know, kind of putting the, I see people wearing this stuff wrong all the time, so I mentioned this. Uh, pull bibs up a little bit, get these under them, bibs to go back over it. That way not falling down your legs the whole time. And these are wool knee warmers by Defeat. They're pretty decent. Uh, there's also some synthetic ones you can get from Castelli, Bontrager, plenty of others. They're good. Uh, and I've found over time, I like to have knee warmers and leg warmers. I lost my leg warmers in someone's car, leaving them in there. So I don't have any right now. I need to get some more. Uh, both, are, both are really nice options. If you get leg warmers, try to get some that have zippers on the end of them. They're a lot easier to take on and off. So then we got our uh, arm warmers. Uh, these are swift wicks. Again, like, you know, pull these things up, try to figure out a combination of, of things where they'll stay up, okay? Sometimes I go like over the base layer, then jersey over the arm warmer, and that kind of sandwiches everything together. So swift wick arm warmers, these are pretty good. I've got some thicker defeat ones. I don't wear those quite as often uh, as these. These are really versatile. I should go ahead and mention, you're typically gonna want more layers on your chest versus the rest of your body, okay? That's the reason I'm not a huge fan of jackets or long sleeve jerseys. So down into the 50s, you got your jersey, bibs, knee warmers, arm warmers, uh, base layer, maybe a vest thrown in there. I, some people are gonna want a hat around this point, like a, a just a basic like cotton cycling cap under a helmet can be nice here. Uh, some people are gonna start wanting a, like a thin beanie around here, I'm not quite there yet. Uh, and also, socks here, okay? Around this point, these are just some wool Swiftwicks. Uh, great socks, uh, plenty of options, but wool Swiftwicks are one of my favorites here. Those with normal shoes, you're probably okay right here still. And then with gloves, you're probably okay with uh, just some basic like long finger gloves probably at this point. I wouldn't be really chasing after adding a whole lot more yet there. And so that, that's got us covered in the 50 degree range. So once it starts getting below there it, in the 40s, you're getting where you're in kind of legitimately like colder weather. So I'll go from bottom up on this one. So around this point, like I'm really considering putting on some uh, shoe covers. These are Bontragers. Uh, they're old, they work well, they're not super thick, they have a good zipper on them really open on the bottom. Be careful with this. I got a pair of Rafa ones that are just awful. They, uh, I had to cut them all up to get them over the cleat on my road shoes and they just did not work well. I would not get those again. So try these on first uh, and err on the side of bigger versus smaller for shoe covers. I'm usually gonna be wearing shoe covers if it's below 50 degrees though. And probably still your, uh, your wool socks. You got the option here of also going like kind of crazy with them. Get some like longer, these are icebreakers that are great socks. I've had them for like 12 years and they're still like new, surprisingly. So taller socks, okay. These are kind of cool because you can get them uh, under the knee warmers and have kind of continuous coverage all the way up. In this temperature range, oftentimes I'm still in bib shorts and knee or leg warmers. You are getting to the point though, especially if you, it might rain, where you could justify some tights, okay. These are Castelli's uh, Nanoflex bibs and these things are not cheap but they are incredibly good they've got this material on them that uh, if i was outside I'd show you uh, you can pretty much pour some water on these and it'll just shed right off of there and it, they, they are just an awesome piece of product right here good uh good ankle zippers as well easy to get on and off fair warning with some of this euro stuff like castelli their larges fit someone's 145 pounds, so fair warning there. Okay, moving on up, we've still got our uh, our base layer, jersey, vest on. Uh, you can also, this, this is a good range where you could start considering like a long sleeve jersey to be viable. I know, this thing's awesome looking, right? Old Nike wool jersey, holes in the arms, classic. Uh, Starts getting to the point where like a long sleeve jersey is more legitimate choice here to kind of add in maybe some thicker arm warmers. I'm probably still in some combination of a vest though because flexibility and layers are your real key to this right here. Uh, you want to be able to 
shed stuff on and off as you go, easy to store it. If you just wear like one big jacket out on a ride like this, you're, you're gonna be miserable. At some point or another, you're gonna wish you had some more layers. And I've also got, around this point, you, you might also consider bringing an actual like uh, shell with you. This is a Gore uh, Windstopper Active Shell. So it's not waterproof, it's water repellent, long sleeve, really thin, kind of tight fit, uh, good for good for blocking wind. This is starting to be a viable choice, maybe instead of a vest here. And on our head, i uh, definitely got a, a cap on at this point. It's on the 40 degree range. This is a, I know I, I talked about it on Rafa stuff earlier, but this hat's really good. This is a wool beanie and this is like my go-to for most like cool weather riding. Really good if the wool stuff gets uh, a little bit wet, it will, you're riding, sweating, my ring. Still gonna be pretty comfortable. Uh, and once I'm, I'll save this one for 30 degrees. Now with gloves here, you're pretty much just, you can try all kinds of different stuff. These are Gore's like Windstopper uh, gloves. These are pretty good around this temperature. I buy these on the big side. The reason I do that is so that I can wear a thin liner glove under them. These are Giro, what are these things called? They're thin Giro wool gloves, uh, no padding but they're awesome to have like under a thicker uh, glove with more volume like this. That way you can do either or, both together if it's real cold. A lot of great options. If it's starting to get where it might rain a little bit, things obviously get more complicated. These are okay, but what I do here, uh, don't be scared to break out of like bike stuff for glove and clothing choices here. These are outdoor researches. Uh, they're actually, these are like ice climbing gloves of some kind. I've got a ridiculous collection of gloves. Uh, you'll probably end up with the same if you ride outside long enough. Not much padding, but they have, it's like a soft shell material. It's real thin kind of liner on the inside and like a water repellent thing on the outside. These are really good if it, if it might rain on you some. So I like those a lot. And that's got us uh, pretty covered, pretty covered there. So dipping down like cold, cold. Okay, so now we're down below below 40, uh, possibly around the freezing point. A lot of people bail out at this point, which whatever, if you want to ride the trainer, or, you know, go run instead, go for it. I like staying outside as long as I can though. So around here, legit cold. It happens in Alabama. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it, it does get cold here and you want to be able to dress for it. So still got, as far as, you know, bottom up, let's go that way again. At this point, Yes, people in Alabama have like winter cycling boots. I'm not the only one, I promise. So these are Shimano's like uh, old MW80 Gore-Tex boots. They've still got clip-in on the bottom. Okay, a little bit rusted because I rode in the cold rain probably. Uh, anyway, these have a good uh, good neoprene liner, a little bit of thin slate insulation, the Gore-Tex. These are just a great product. They're really durable too. I've had them for a long time. Don't be scared to get legit winter uh, cycling shoes they are totally worth the money and they don't fall off your shoes or tear up like shoe covers do fair warning on the size be careful i usually go up a size versus my regular shoes to give some room for some socks and blood to flow in your foot still don't cramp your toes with any of this or you will be freezing no matter what so these are legitimate choice here as are the shoe covers still sometimes people put a chemical toe warmer uh, between layers there that's a nice option and you can either, you can do two things here as far as the shorts go. You can still have your bibs on with a pair of standalone tights without a chamois over them. These are ski tights from some company in Colorado that does not exist anymore. They are super old and they are still incredible. They're kind of thicker material. They're not totally windproof or anything. Some of the, some of the stuff that has really heavy duty windproofing on the front of tights doesn't bend very well. Your knees have to bend a lot when you're riding. So be careful there. That's a good option. Also, if you have tights that don't have a chamois built in, you don't have to wash them constantly like you would the Castellis that have the built in pad, okay? You have to wash those every ride. So, this is still a good option though, okay? The Castelli bibs, they have a lot of stuff besides the Nano Flex. There's like a Thermo Flex. Von Traeger has them too. Everyone makes these. They're all pretty good. Just trying some different things, see what works for you. And let's see. So, coming on up, we got a. We've still got our base layer on. Uh, if it's this cold, you are gonna want a base layer. You want your jersey. I'm probably going for a thicker, thicker sort of vest here, a jacket. This is a Gore, 
I've mentioned Gore a lot. They make good stuff. It's expensive, but it works. This is a Gore Windstopper soft shell convertible vest and jacket that's got sleeves you can zip off of here. I usually around this temperature, unless it's like 20 degrees, I'm probably not wearing a jacket. I'm probably gonna use thick arm warmers and a thick vest and my arms stay pretty warm. Your mileage obviously vary though. But one thing that's nice here, these, are have, these have pockets you can get into easily in the back. Also some zippers for pockets. This is a really good product here. I like this a lot. You could also go with a thinner, thinner vest still, and then throw like the, uh, like the thin shell over that. And you've also still got your choice of like long sleeve jersey under some of this too, instead of arm warmers. So you've got a lot of good options right there for your, your upper body. So still keep in mind, you're gonna want more layers on your torso versus your legs and your arms almost always. That'll, that'll keep you comfortable without like sweating a ton. If, if you really sweat out heavily on rides, you are gonna be wet and miserable and cold. And one thing that helps there is having stuff with a lot of zippers on the front. I've mentioned that numerous times, but your ideal clothing going up a climb versus down the other side is drastically different. And being able to quickly unzip some stuff, that really improves ventilation a lot there. And, uh, oh, so up top, under the helmet, Castelli, also mentioned them a few times. Uh, Windstopper hat, nice bill on the front, some ear flaps, good Windstopper material. I like this hat a lot. This, this thing's been really good down to uh, 25, 25 degrees, maybe 20. Uh, really, really good product. This is even good if it rains a little bit too, which is nice, or snows, all that good stuff. And that's got us covered on upper body and the head. Gloves, uh, again, you might be airing towards the side of a really heavy glove here. Yeah, Gore should really be paying me something for this video, I think at this point. So, okay, Gore, again, wind stopper. There's multiple wind stopper shell designations by them. These are probably the soft shell wind stopper with some added insulation to them. I wear these with the liner glove I mentioned, and I can get down to pretty cold, probably in the 20s with this comfortably. Don't be scared to do the chemical uh, warmer somewhere around this too, a little bit extra. And if you just want to go completely wild here, you can go for uh, pogies, okay? Bar mitts. Again, these are ridiculous having Alabama, but I like them sometimes. So these go slip over the handlebar like that. Your hand goes in from here for flat bars and hold on. You can wear a really thin glove under these and still have good dexterity with the controls and be able to eat and whatnot. These, uh, obviously, if it gets hot with these, you're stuck, okay? You don't have a bailout option. You're gonna be really sweaty with your hands. So keep these probably the sub-freezing temperatures. It's also really hard to get your hands out if you fall. Uh, I don't touch these on a mountain bike, period. This is just really asking for, for trouble if you run into some stuff. So they also make these for road bars uh, to go over a brake hood if you can get on. Again, maybe a little extreme for the Southeast here, but bar mitts or pogies, 45 North makes some good ones. These do end up being like a viable option at, at some choice. So don't, don't be scared but just because you live in the South. Oh, I can't buy this or this. If you wanna be comfortable riding in the winter, you need good options. And of course, let's see, the one thing I'm probably missing out here is like a thick, thick jacket. I've got a Pearl Izumi. It's like a, let's see, it'd be similar to, to a uh, Patagonia Nano Puff jacket. Really thin, primo loft insulation, like 60 grams. If I know I'm riding slow and it's gonna be like super, super cold, I'll, uh, I'll just throw that on and, and go with it. Uh, brief mention, e-bikes here. They're more popular now, you go faster, <laughs> get ready for it. It's real, real cold in the in the winter time on those. I've been kind of shocked how cold a few times. I, I might even get a set of actual like ski goggles this year for uh, longer rides if I'm on that bike. Uh, it, everything's really cold, those temperatures. So fair warning for the e-bikes. So uh, you have to really recalibrate your sense of what's normal clothing to wear on those. Uh, one thing I did not mention is embrocation, okay? Uh, Cross racers, cyclocross racers put it all over their legs. It makes the skin really uh, kind of tingly, like warm feeling. And 
I just quit using this stuff years ago after reading something from Steve Tilford, uh, uh, American legend that said pretty much like what that's doing is uh, dilating all these capillaries near the surface of your skin, which really just lets you get colder. You know, it's it's the same reason like people get really drunk and you know hypothermia. You know, just losing heat quicker. So if for cross, if it's super muddy, yes, yeah, slide the stuff on. But for general riding. I'm, I'm not a big fan of it. You know, obviously use what you like, but I just skip it and pick proper clothing. And did not mention like a real, real rain shell here for riding. I don't use one really. Uh, you, you can, it, it, you're probably gonna sweat through it at some point anyway, and just be wet the same amount. So that's a giant pile of clothing. So I hope that, uh, I hope that helped everyone. If you have any questions or comments or any of that, leave a comment or uh, stop by the shop, uh, Cobble Cycles in Homewood and talk to us, see what we have to offer here. But hopefully that helps you with your winter riding, not being miserable and continue to get some miles in outside if you want to. Thanks.